Uh, during President Biden's first year in office, the economy added a record 6.6 .6 million jobs, more jobs than those added in the first years of the past four Republican presidents combined. Workers are benefiting, too, with wages growing at their strongest pace in years. And this is particularly impressive because one year ago, many economists were predicting that at this point, we'd still be caught up with high unemployment and slow economic growth as the world struggled to deal with the fallout from the pandemic. But this good news has also brought some bad news, inflation. Now, you might think inflation would also be bad for companies. After all, an increase in the cost of doing business would likely eat into a company's bottom line. But that's not happening. In fact, the CEOs of some of the biggest companies have been bragging to their investors that inflation has created a terrific opportunity for them to boost profits. Take the grocery chain, Kroger. Kroger has seen its business boom during the pandemic, with its stock price rising nearly 40% over the past year. Kroger's CEO recently told investors that, quote, a little bit of inflation is always good in our business, end quote. So Dr. Boucher, would you agree that it's easier for companies like Kroger to raise prices in an inflationary environment because consumers are generally aware that prices are going up and that lets companies hide behind inflation to expand their profits. Well, as you know, Senator, you know, President Biden is very attuned to kitchen table budget issues, and he has been very focused on um, asking the regulatory agencies to be um, on the alert for price gouging. And I have in front of me a long list of things that have been happening over the past um, uh, year uh, on his work um, to make sure that markets are, are competitive and fair. But let me just note one, um, which is that, you know, they they have uh, the, the Department of Justice and the USDA have worked together to set up a website where farmers and ranchers can say where they see problems in their industry. Um, and that's just one of many things. So it's an important issue. So an important issue. And but the point I'm trying to make here is the companies get to kind of draft in behind the inflation. And I take it you agree that that's what's going on here. OK, so you nodding your head. Yes, I'll <laughs> take that as a yes. Let me go to another example. In a call with investors last week, the CEO of Tyson Foods, one of the big four conglomerates that controls as much as 85% of the meat market, said they've, quote, restructured our pricing approach, end quote, and are, quote, asking them, the consumers, to pay for inflation, end quote. Dr. Bernstein, if all Tyson was doing was raising prices to offset their production costs due to inflation, would you expect their profit margins to stay roughly the same? Roughly the same, because Roughly the same. Uh, their, their uh, price increases would offset their cost increases, right. which would hold their profits. Okay, so their profit should stay roughly the same. Roughly if, the same. If that's all that was going on. Of course, that is not what happened. Tyson nearly doubled its profit margin over the year to 11.3%, only the fourth time in the last 30 years that the company has achieved double-digit profit margins. And Tyson isn't making record profits because it is selling more. In fact, it's making record profits because it is charging more. The number of beef products it sold declined 6% over the year, while the price of beef went up 32%. So let's do one more example here. Another phrase we hear thrown around is pricing power. In a recent interview, the CEO of Chipotle said, we're pretty fortunate with the pricing power that we have, end quote. And that, quote, if we need to take more pricing, we have room to do it. To date, we've seen no resistance from our customers, end quote. Now, this sounds a lot to me like what Fed uh, Chair Powell said when he was here last month. Big companies are, quote, raising prices because they can. So, Chair Rouse, let me ask you, for those of us who don't speak economist, is it right to say that when executives talk about pricing power, they're referring to a company's ability to raise prices and extract profits out of consumers without worrying about losing business? Um, I 
say it's fair to say that a company has pricing power when raising prices won't cause them to lose too many customers? And can I just ask, I know I'm out of time, what is it that gives companies pricing power? Does concentration in an industry give companies more pricing power? So market concentration does tend to create more pricing power, which is one reason why increasing competition is such an important component of the administration's economic agenda. Because we know that increased competition also helps workers, spurs innovation, and generally helps markets function better. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to say I'm glad the Biden administration is not standing by. We can go after this concentrated power industry by industry, and that's what will help bring prices down. Thank you so much.